This use update is brought to you by. Grab somebody and tell them hello. This is the Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, November 12th. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Our top story, a sense of shock, is how the Barbadian dentist who was detained at Miami International Airport on Monday evening after his carry-on luggage triggered a security alert is reacting to the episode. And Barbados Today can reveal this evening that the source of the security scare was nothing but dental detachable cable tubing used to clean teeth. Up to 50 flights were delayed for hours, traffic was backed up outside the airport terminal, and armed police in riot gear boarded American Airlines Flight 2393 bound for Barbados over concerns that dental equipment taken on the flight by Dr. Anthony McCaskey in his carry-on posed a threat to passengers and crew. Dr. McCaskey told Barbados today he was returning home after completing an orthodontic course when the chaotic situation unfolded. I was indeed apprehended, investigated, and searched by police and the FBI officials having boarded American Airlines flight number 2393 on my scheduled return to Barbados after having completed an orthodontic course. The same suspicious item was a dental replacement part in my backpack. The same backpack was checked twice by TSA scanners. I was certainly the most shocked person when I was arrested. I'm happy to be back in Barbados, and I'm currently pursuing my legal options on this matter. Monday's incident affected incoming and outgoing flights and shut down two concourses for nearly three hours. Nine flights were diverted, according to local media reports. The Miami Herald also reported that there was such a backup of traffic that passengers said they got out of cars and walked to the ramp with their luggage. In other news this evening, a good, respectful, and decent man who was efficient in his work and loved his life. That was the resounding theme today as family and colleagues remembered the life and times of Alan Carter, the memorial service at the chapel of Coral Ridge Memorial Gardens. The late Jamaican attorney at, died at hospital on October 22nd after falling ill on the job. President of the Barbados Bar Association, Tariq Khan, his colleague, Andrew Pilgrim QC and longtime friend Professor Winston Anderson, a judge of the Caribbean Court of Justice, paid tribute to him. They all described the 56-year-old criminal justice criminal lawyer as a gentleman who was always happy and always on the move. There are seldom times when a death touches us, and the circumstances of Alan's death are particularly pondering tumultuous, to die at the bar, to die in the act of his service, in the act of his profession. It says much about him. Alan was somebody who went from court to court, who fiercely represented the interest of his clients, who had the energy and the commitment to be in three places at the same time. Imagine a lawyer who was to the point and always brief in his submissions. In the context of Barbados, perhaps that is unimaginable. He would not waste words, or more importantly, time, if it could be avoided. Intense and direct. These words help to define a man who you could rely on for honesty and directness. November 11th. 2005, Alan and I met for the last time. We didn't speak very much. One of the rivers had run its course. As I gazed upon his silent and serene countenance, his epitaph came with stunning clarity across the ocean of four square years and two. And I marveled at the perspicacity of that teenage rebel who had become the respected lawyer. 
By his request, no tombstone will bear his epitaph. The fourth victim of the recent vehicular accident on Two Mile Hill was laid to rest today. Family and friends of Kerry Brathwaite paid their last respects this afternoon. On Tuesday, her friends Shamika and Shakira Shepard and Waveney Johnson, who also died in the crash, were laid to rest. Members of the concerned BHL shareholder group say they are watching and waiting. In a statement this afternoon, the group said they are keeping their shares close to their chest and advised fellow shareholders not to sell unless they are sure they are getting the highest bid possible. The group maintains the BHL directors did not act in their best interest when they agreed to the controversial exit clause in the 2010 loan agreement with SLU Beverages. The shareholders say they remain skeptical about Ambev after researching its history. And with respect to Ansa Makal, they say they will await the outcome of the injunction, which they believe is in their interest. It's been almost two months since St. Thomas resident Tonya Dean allegedly lost $600 from her Royal Bank account after she made a withdrawal from a CIBC First Caribbean automated teller machine in Warrens. Dean tells Barbados today she is now frustrated after many unsuccessful attempts to get the money back into her account. Dean says on September 26, she withdrew $600, but the receipt showed less than what she knew was supposed to be on the balance. In addition, she says her account was debited to ATM fees. She says she is frustrated since she has been out of a job since September 30th and she needs the money. However, Senior Manager of Corporate Communications at Royal Bank, Nicole Duke, tells Barbados today she is aware of Dean's situation and the bank has been in contact with her. She says Royal Bank officials are also in contact with CIBC officials with the intention of bringing the matter to a close as quickly as possible. First Caribbean later issued a statement saying the matter has been rectified and the funds returned to Ms. Dean's financial services institution. The bank also apologized to Ms. Dean, saying it regrets the customer has been kept waiting for a refund. There's regional and international news after this short break. In news from the region, Guyana's National Sugar Company is reporting increased production, even as the workers' union says it is still awaiting wage talks with the company. We get the details from Capital News. While the sugar industry continues to be plagued with many challenges, the Ghana Sugar Corporation, Gaisuko, is reporting success in sugar production at some of its estates. According to Gaisuko, having completed grinding for the last 15 weeks for the current crop, the sugar production to date is just over 118,000 tons. As of Monday last, Gaisuko is reporting that Skeldon and Blairmont estates surpassed their weekly targets, while Albion, Rose Hall, and Enmore estates achieved around 90%. Blairmont is being praised for producing the highest daily production of 240 tons of sugar for this crop. Meanwhile, the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union, GAWU, took a decision not to strike this week over delayed wage negotiations with Gaisuko. And finally, several African leaders say the $1.9 billion European fund to tackle African migration is not enough. Their statement follows crisis talks with the European counterparts this week. It was one of several measures agreed to at the Malta summit to try and reduce the flow of people into Europe. We get more from this BBC report. It's like trying to repair a leaking dam. Block up the hole in one area and water comes gushing through elsewhere. The migrant route to Europe has moved from Morocco to Libya and now to Turkey. This issue isn't almost over. It's going to be with Europe for years to come. And long-term problems need long-term solutions. 
So far, the EU's reaction has been chaotic and uncoordinated. But these meetings in Malta are a real attempt at finding a more strategic approach. But will it work? The president of the European Council says it has to, though it won't be easy. That's the news this evening. There's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also, tune in to Channel 101 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news and sports. I am Marika Williams. Good evening.